Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to talk about pressing flowers. I'm gonna show you how I do it, and we're gonna also do some wall art with it. There's a whole bunch of different craft projects you can use pressed flowers for. In fact, there's a few that I want to do later on this fall. And that's the thing, I wanted to talk about this now because most of us still have beautiful flowers and leaves out in the garden, and if we get with it and get them in a press, then we'll have them to work with later on when our gardens are all dormant. It's just such a wonderful way to preserve some of the beauty that's out in our garden right now. So there are several different ways you can press flowers, two of which I've never tried personally, and that's pressing them using an iron or the microwave. There are tutorials online to do that, and I believe it's a lot faster than my preferred method, which is using weight and time. So basically just putting a lot of pressure and weight on the flowers and leaves to make them really flat and then giving them enough time to dry out. And you can do that two different ways, either using a flower press like this one right here, just got this one in from Gardener Supply, or you can use a stack of heavy books. But I tend to like, if there is a specific tool I can use for a project that's pretty, I tend to like to do it that way because this right here, this is romancing the ordinary, to have something that's specifically made to press our flowers. And it's just such a relaxing thing to do in the first place because you get to start out by touring your garden. You go out and you walk around slowly taking it in, looking for beautiful blooms and interesting leaves. Um, like when I went out to fill up this press, because I already have this filled up because I wanted some to show you in this video, um, I started off by harvesting some peachberry ice hookah leaves because the color was just vibrant and gorgeous. I even got some of the blooms um, to put hopefully in one of these frames today. I got some gorgeous pink Japanese anemones that actually was a little bit of an experiment because they have a little bit of a thicker center and I wanted to see how they would look pressed. I got some limelight hydrangeas because right now they are just at their peak, they're gorgeous, and if I use those against a darker background, they'll really shine. Black lace elderberry is also a really beautiful, interesting leaf because it's really dark colored and um, just has a lot of drama in that one leaf. And then once I had all of my pretty things gathered up, I brought them all to a table so that I could start filling up my press. And to open this one, it has just this big Velcro strap that you open up and then the lid itself comes completely off and it's just this weighty piece of wood. And then inside you see all the layers. So we have layers of cardboard and blotting paper. So what I do is put one piece of cardboard down, then a piece of blotting paper, and then I started to arrange my peachberry ice hookah leaves just to where they would all fit well on that one sheet. And then another piece of blotting paper, cardboard, blotting paper. The next layer had variegated viburnum leaves that are so pretty. Uh, oh so easy paprika roses because I think that color will really shine in the arrangement I'm working on today. Beautiful pink Japanese anemones. Uh, and then another piece of blotting paper cardboard and so on. And I just kept filling up the press until I think I had almost all these layers filled up today. And that's the thing, when you go out and gather up all your stuff, make it worth it and really press a lot so that you can do a lot of fun projects. So before we get into the press to see how everything did, I just wanted to share a few tips. So first off, it takes between two and four weeks for your flowers to press, depending on what kind of flowers you're working with and what their moisture content is like. And you can check on them. Like after about two weeks or so, open it up and see how they're doing. And you can always close them back in there if you need to. Um, you want to pick flowers that are nice and at their peak because you will lose some color. As they dry, they're not quite as vibrant. So if you pick your flowers at the most vibrant stage of their growth, you'll have the best color. Of course, you want to pick ones that look good, that don't have damage or tears, rips, things like that. Um, you also want to face them in your press down. So um, as you're putting them in your press, you don't want to look at the face of them. You want to put them down because the weight that goes on top of them will naturally push them into a nice position. As opposed to if you you have flowers that have kind of roughly petals sticking upward. If you put that weight down, it can kind of crush them and make them look weird and the shape isn't quite right. You also want to pick them when they're dry. So don't go out first thing in the morning when they've got dew on them or sprinkler water still on them. Just let the day kind of the sunshine dry them off a bit and then pick them later on in the day. Um, and then flat flowers, of course, work the best. If you pick something like a rose, those are hard to dry because they've got such a thick, moist like bud at the base that when you go in to like trim them up and make them flatter to put in your press, sometimes you can trim too much and the whole thing will fall apart. Those types of flowers, it's better just to dismantle them and uh, press the petals individually and then kind of put them back, back together as you're doing your craft project. And I think that that is all of my tips. It's really an uncomplicated process. So now let's get into this press. So I'm gonna open it up again. And I'm just gonna be a little bit gentle. I'm not sure that I actually have some in the top layers. So we're gonna go down and it's a little bit breezy. Like this may have been a better project to do inside where petals can't blow away. <laughs> Didn't really think about that. Okay. 
So here's our first layer. I'm not gonna open it up all the way because I don't want them to blow away. But let me take this off and you wanna be very gentle. You can kind of fold the paper a bit. There we go. Oop. Look at that. These dried beautifully. And I was just noticing that some of my limelight uh, hydrangeas are coloring up for fall right now. So they're, they've got like pink and burgundy, burgundy tinge on their petals. So I think I'm gonna harvest some more today after I'm done unloading this so I can get some more going. All right, so this next layer has the black lace elderberry. Oh, that is so pretty. I'm gonna try to put some of these out on the table because I'm gonna need them out for my project anyway. Here's an anemone. Oh, that turned out really pretty. This one didn't fare so well. So see, I wanted to show you this. This was actually one of the things I forgot to mention just a second ago. See how this anemone had a little bit of moisture come through and it actually stained the cardboard right below it. If you are doing this using your books and you're doing it in between pages of your books, just know that that can happen. Um, so if you're the type who really likes to keep your books nice, maybe think about investing in a flower press and that way you just won't risk it. I am gonna save these petals because I may use them. This one I'm excited for. Okay, I'm gonna put some of these out on the table and hopefully they don't blow away. Oh, they're so pretty. They're just so delicate. We've got pansies on this page. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. That so far is my favorite. This layer has another huge black lace elderberry and more hydrangeas. Ooh. Oh, oh. Oh, well, that made my job easier. All right, well, in that layer, I had apparently another black lace hookera. I had, or uh, elderberry, excuse me, I was looking at the hookera blooms. We've got some really pretty, um, these are the blooms off the peach berry ice right here, and then a few of the leaves. Also, I should have a pair of tweezers out here. I need to go get one. I kind of forget all the things that I need to have out because it's been so long since I've done this. Okay. So this right here, this is a uh, viburnum, a variegated vi viburnum. We call it a wayfaring tree. And the variegation in these is just amazing. I really like this one. Okay, we've got some roses here. They turned out pretty good. Oh yeah, oh, that's so sweet. Oh. And the last layer has the hookera leaves. Oh, so pretty. I think that is gonna be really pretty with the pansy. Mm, I love it. Okay, and that does it. So I'm gonna put this back together and I'm gonna run inside and grab a pair of tweezers, um, which will make handling these a lot easier. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna put together a picture for my frame. So to make this picture, it's super easy. I've got a couple of different sizes of frames here. Um, some watercolor paper, which you could use any kind of paper, but I just tend to like the texture of this one. Like it already has a really pretty look to it. Uh, some tacky glue, a paintbrush to apply the glue, tweezers to help you pick up the flowers, and uh, what else? Scissors and a pencil. So I'm gonna take the frame apart first. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut out this little picture I could see through the front of the frame. So I'm gonna use this little picture right here as kind of a stencil or a guide to help me cut out a proper size piece of watercolor paper. It is a little bit bigger than the opening, but that's perfect because in the end, I'm gonna need a way to tape it into the frame. God. Yep, that is absolutely perfect. So first I'm gonna take the flowers and arrange them in a way that I think I want to attach them to the paper without actually gluing them. And then once I get it looking exactly how I want it to, then I'll start attaching with glue. So now that I have the flowers kind of arranged how I think I want them to look, um, I'm gonna start gluing them down. It's just always a good idea to get kind of a track to run on so that you're not removing things after you have glue down because then things get sticky and messy. So I'm just gonna take these off and start gluing them down one by one. So I'm gonna start by gluing my big leaf down first and I'm just gonna dab a little bit of the glue on and then use my brush to spread it around. 
it doesn't take a ton. And for the more delicate flowers, you'll just wanna apply it straight to the flower with your brush rather than dabbing the whole glue bottle on. Okay, so for a delicate hookah bloom like this one, I've got my paintbrush kind of loaded up and I'm just gonna dab some glue here and there along the stem. Okay, so I think it's pretty much done. I mean, you could just keep going to town with things like this. I actually think it would be really fun to do a very simple, like just one leaf and um, highlight a specific you know, type of plant in there, and that would give it a more clean, modern look. Um, but this one I think looks really fun. So I'm just going to put it face down on the glass, and then I'm gonna go find some tape. <laughs> Isn't that just the sweetest thing? I hope you're able to see it really well. It's hard outside with anything that has glass because there's so much glare, um, but we'll try to get some pictures of it. I just wanted to show you a way you can utilize pressed flowers. And if you are pressing all through the season, you can have all kinds of different blooms to work with from every season of the year. And you can make art for yourself. You can do this as a gift for somebody. Like what an amazing gift to give at Christmas. I would love to get something like this. And I also go down to the dollar store and get their little tiny frames and change them into Christmas ornaments. Usually by putting Christmas cards in them. But I think if you make little mini pressed flower picture frame ornaments, that would be the sweetest thing on a garden themed tree. I just think there's so many different ways you can use them. So anyway, now that my press is empty, I'm gonna save these. I'll probably just put them in between some paper somewhere um, where they're safe. And I'm gonna fill this press back up before you know, it gets too cold and we start losing things out in the garden. So anyway, I hope this video was inspiring to you guys to try something new and uh, just a different way to utilize blooms out of your garden. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.